In this video, we want to talk about phototransduction, or the conversion of a light stimulus into a uh, receptor response. And so in this case, we're going to focus on the photoreceptive cells known as rods. And we're going to focus on those because they make up about 95% of all photoreceptive cells, the other 5% being the cones. Now the cones work in a very similar fashion, so we can use the rods as an example here. Now for orientation, it's important to note that light is traveling into the eye from the bottom of our picture here and is striking our photoreceptive cells at the back of the retina. Now in those photoreceptive cells, we have these outer segments that are, are dominated by these membranous discs which are, that are blown up here on the right side. Now we have our photopigment, rhodopsin, that's the photopigment for rods. It would be iodopsin in the cones, but the mechanism again will be very similar. Now in the absence of light, in the dark here, uh, we are not activating our photopigment, and so we get persistent uh, expression of this cyclic GMP ligand, right? This is an intracellular signaling molecule that binds to and opens a ligand-gated channel that's permeable to both sodium and calcium. Well, both of those ions flow down their electrochemical gradients into the cell, tending to depolarize it. Now, conversely, there's a potassium leak channel that is a little bit more dominant, and that potassium would be going down its electrochemical gradient out of the cell. The combination of those uh, ion currents lead to a, a partial depolarization, about minus 30 millivolts, right? The, it's negative because the potassium leak is, is still the dominant flow here. Um, but it's still partially depolarized. And that dark depolarization leads to the release of our neurotransmitter glutamate onto our bipolar cell. Okay, so this is an odd scenario. We have no stimulus, quote unquote, right? We're in the dark, yet we're getting neurotransmitter release. Over here in the light, right, we've got photons entering the light, striking our photoreceptive cell. So in this case, our rhodopsin, right, again right here, is now becoming active and we're going to uh, activate a middleman protein called transducin, that's this little square. That's gonna activate an enzyme called phosphodiesterase. And the action of phosphodiesterase is to cleave the ring in cyclic GMP, inactivating it, right? And because it's now inactivated, our ligand-gated channel will close. You can see our gate here is closing. So we no longer get sodium and calcium influx. This means that the potassium efflux is now our dominant current and our membrane potential becomes hyperpolarized, more negative. This of course leads to decreased neurotransmitter output, right, in the presence of light. Again, that's an odd scenario. Now, important thing to point out though, is that our neurotransmitter over here on the left shown, right, our glutamate release can bind to receptors that are stimulatory or inhibitory to our bipolar cell, right? And so it's gonna depend on what type of bipolar cell we're actually synapsing with, whether or not it will be stimulated or inhibited in the light or the dark. This is a very confusing situation, but let's boil it down and point to one important part here. And that's that if we look at uh, something that has both light and dark components, like the word dark down here, right? The letters themselves are black, right? That's those letters themselves are, are not uh, stimulating photoreceptive cells with photons of light being reflected, right? But the white background is. And it's important to note that uh, we need to be sensitive to both light and dark things in our background. And hopefully that helps explain this uh, neurotransmitter release in the presence of dark and potential activation of our bipolar cells.